So today we're doing um, a, a type of art and it's called op art. And you may have heard of it before, but op art is, we're looking at an artist who is an op artist. And op art stands for optical art. And it's this really cool art that basically it fools your eye, it tricks your eye. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, when I was a kid that we had, used to have something called magic eye, magic eye books. And, and it was like hidden pictures that you, you were inside of, inside of um, like a lot of these, there were these swirly colors and there'd be like hidden pictures inside of them. And if you stared long enough at them, then the picture would reveal itself. But you almost had to like hypnotize yourself to, to, for the picture to become, to be revealed. Well, op art was the kind of art that creates that kind of thing. And the cool thing is that it was done Op art was done before computers were a big thing. So when op art started, there were no, there were no, I mean, there, I think computers actually existed at the time, but they, not like we have them now. Uh, oh, I see some people have the magic eye books, like, or spy books. Yeah. So they're like, it's like, you have to, you almost have to like cross your eyes to see the pictures. Um, they were really big in like the nineties, I think. <laughs> so it might be a little old for, some of you might not know what I'm talking about, but that's okay. Um, I'm actually going to share some op art. I'm going to share my screen in a second because sometimes um, op art is just best explored by looking at it. So there's two really big names in op art, and I like op art because one of the big names is um, is her name is Bridget Riley, and she's a woman, which I think is really important because. A lot of times in art, it, especially in the past, it's a lot of the men get most of the recognition. But for op art, one of the biggest names is a woman named Bridget Riley. And the other name is Victor Vassarelli. And um, we're actually looking at a Victor Vassarelli picture today for our inspiration. But I wanted to share with you, let me just, one second. Let me just share my screen. And I will, um, and you guys can get a chance to see some of some of these cool pictures. One second. All right. So here we go. You should be should be able to see my screen now. So <laughs> this is a Bridget Riley piece. <laughs> she made it in 1964. And like I said, the cool part about this is that she made this without computers. So there was no she didn't use a computer to create this piece of art. And when you look at it, it's, it sometimes it almost makes you like look a little dizzy or like sometimes if you stare it long enough, like things might start to move or it might start to like, like shimmer or it, 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 it's, a, it's an optical illusion. And artists use a bunch of things to help them. This Bridget Riley was playing on um, a shape. She was playing on black and white and see how like the dots go kind of gray. So that it's all, it's all trying to trick your eyes. Let's go down to another one. Oh, this one's cool. So this is Victor Vassarelli. He's the, art, the artist that we're looking at today. And Victor Vassarelli um, liked to use color. He liked to use line and color. And so in this one, if you notice all of these red, uh, I guess it's a rhombus, is it a rhombus shape? So all of these red romb rhombus shapes, that are in the middle of each of these squares, they almost all look like they're different colors. But the crazy thing about op art is that I'm pretty sure that all of them are actually a similar color. So yeah, I have to double check that, but like it's, so they say artists use shapes, colors, or patterns in a special way to make it look like the images are moving or blurring. And what they're doing is they're kind of preying on our eyes. So our eyes, you can, we can actually trick our eyes. We can fool our eyes based on colors and based on shapes. And that's what these artists are trying to do. Let's look a couple more. This is called Light Trap. I don't know this one as well. Oh, this one's a good one. This is another Bridget Riley. So she used a lot of black and white, a lot of like swirling shapes. It's like almost like if you look at it, it almost kind of looks like it's popping out of the paper. But it's not, it's just a, it's, it, it's, it's flat. It's a 2D piece of art, of art. Ooh, I love this one. Ambiguous structure number 92. So this is a really cool one. So he, it really does make it look like 
there's different like the grids are like kind of popping out in different ways just basically based on the angles of the shapes that he's using on the colors that he's using it's very cool Ooh, this one's really neat this is frank stella a different op artist but he he like it it's funny because like the colors are the same on the, the, the bottom, the bottom part and the top part, but almost, when you look at them, they almost look like they might not be the same, like the same colors. I don't know. It definitely fools with your eyes. Sometimes people have a hard time looking at op art because it makes them feel dizzy or it makes them like, it gives them a headache. <laughs> if that happens to you, you, uh, you don't have to look, <laughs> but all right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. And if you go, to the um so on the link that you clicked for our for our class there was an example by victor vessarelli and it was called zebra and it was something that he made in 1950 and it's kind of like the magic eye pictures and it's a hidden picture inside so that's kind of what we're going to be doing today oh thank you scott scott just posted if you need to click on the link so you can click on the link if you need to see to see the um, the the image that we're using today. So it is a zebra, and you can kind of see it if you look at it. And um, that's kind of what we're going to create today. Basically, he was using lines and shapes to fool or trick the eye. So when we're working on a piece of paper, we're really working flat. It's a we're working two dimensionally. This piece of paper is a flat piece of paper. Nothing pops out of it. But with through the power of illusion, we can kind of create um, a, a shape that will look like it is coming forth. It looks, it'll, it'll appear like it is popping out of the paper. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, let me switch cameras. So some of the materials you need today are just a regular piece of paper. This is optional. I have a black sheet of paper because we're going to be making a silhouette or a, a super simple shape to trace. And it can be as simple as you want. Um, you don't have to do this step. You could actually just draw your shape right on the paper. But I was just going to do an extra step just to, to show you, just to show you another way of doing it. Okay, let me switch my camera. The other tools you're going to need today, focus this, there we go, are um, scissors if you're going to use a, a separate sheet of paper to cut out a shape. You're going to need a pencil. Um, it, you may or may not want a ruler. I may try to do it without a ruler. We'll see. Okay. And then you're going to need something to color. So the first step, and like I said, you could draw your shape just straight out onto your white paper, or if you would like to create a silhouette first on a black sheet of paper, cut it out and trace it, you're welcome to do that too. So I actually already started, I don't know if you can see, I, I drew in a super simple dolphin shape. So when I'm talking about a silhouette, and I know it's a little hard to see on a paper, I'm gonna, I'll draw it in a little darker so you guys can see it. So when you're, the trick to doing this is that you have to pick something that is super, super simple. It can be an animal silhouette. And when I say silhouette, what I mean is it's the outside shape of, of something. It's the contour line of something. So that could be, an animal, it could be something super simple. You could literally just make, do yours as a circle. You could, you could do one of your hand, you could trace your hand. You could, um, you could do a, a shape that is um, like a star. You could do a, a different type of animal. It's totally up to you what you choose to do. But I will say that whatever you do choose, has to be a silhouette. So that means that there's no lines on the interior. Um, you, like Evie, yes, you can actually just draw it out on your paper if you want. You do not have to trace it the way I'm doing it. Um, but this was just an extra step. If, you've, if you felt uncomfortable drawing it straight on your paper, you don't have to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and trace it out. Because I already, I already had my idea because I thought about it a little bit before class. So it might take you guys a little bit more time, but you do want the, whatever shape or animal or creature you pick to be super simple. It'll be more successful if it's simple. 
and it'll be super successful if you um, if you keep the shape really recognizable. So the one of the reasons why I chose a dolphin was that because it's a really recognizable shape. Everybody can kind of like see the shape of a dolphin jumping out of the water and be like, oh, it's a dolphin. You want to pick something that anybody looking at it will be like, oh yeah, that's what that is. A hummingbird's an awesome idea. So you, Evie, you are doing a silhouette of something. So it could be, it could be a zebra. It could be an animal like, like my dolphin or a zebra. It could be a silhouette of something else. It could be a, you're just, you're picking a shape, okay? And the shape could be an animal. It could just be a geometric shape that you do. You could just do a star or your hand. It could be a, um, it could be just a circle. It's totally up to you what shape you do. You just, like I said, you want your shape, whatever your shape is, you want it to be recognizable. So here's my shape. So it could be anything you want, but the more successful ones are gonna be of, um, that are, are fairly simple and that are really easy to recognize. So like I said, dolphin is pretty easy to recognize when we see it jumping out of the water. Um, a hand is pretty easy to recognize if we trace our hand. Hope that, does that answer your question, Evie? If you don't wanna cut it out, then all you have to do is sketch out whatever shape you want on the paper, just lightly with your pencil, okay? You don't have to cut it out if you don't want to. So I'll do one where I trace mine and then maybe I'll do one on the back side that I just draw it out. It's the same thing. I just added an extra step just um, so you guys could really see the shape that I was doing. So here we so, go. So basically you're starting with the silhouette and then ending up with something like the zebra. Exactly. Optical illusion. Exactly. I'm going to show you how to turn your silhouette into an optical illusion. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. So I'm just tracing my, my, tracing my uh, dolphin. When I trace it, I did this a little bit dark, but when you do it, I actually want you to trace it in kind of lightly. The back has a little, a few smudges, but if I was just gonna draw out my shape, like maybe on the back side, I just wanna do a simple shape. Maybe I just do a star. So I'm just gonna draw in my star. And uh, I'm trying to just use contour, or the contour lines, just like this. So here's my other one where I did a, a star. Oh, I don't like that line. I don't like that. There we go. But keep the lines kind of um, light. Okay. So it could be as simple as that, or you could go. Um, with an animal shape. Okay, so it could, you could do either or. But like I said, the, the simplest forms are going to be the easiest. Now, to create the illusion, to create the illusion that your your creature is going to be popping out, what we're going to do is on the background. So now we have we have two parts of our picture. We have the, this is gonna be the background, what is the outside space, and then you have whatever shape you picked, and that's called the foreground. So you have background, foreground. So on the background, the part that is behind your shape, we're gonna start by drawing in straight lines. So I'm gonna start at this corner, and what I'm gonna do, and you, if you want to use a ruler for this, you can. I'm gonna do it freehand, but if you'd like to use a ruler, you're more than welcome to. Starting at the corner, I'm just gonna draw some straight lines. And when I hit my shape, I'm gonna stop. And I, I'm gonna jump over and continue the line. Just like that, okay? So I'm doing straight lines, and I'm gonna do them pretty close. It'll be more successful the closer you put your lines together. I'm doing straight lines. Then I jump and continue that straight line down, okay? All right, straight line, 
jump. And you're gonna do this for your whole paper. So the whole thing. If you feel pretty confident in this and you want to skip a step, you could do your straight lines with a Sharpie. So if you're like, I'm pretty confident drawing straight lines and I don't wanna to have to trace over all of my straight lines, you could take a black marker or a Sharpie and you could use that. So I'm just tracing over some of my lines. But if you are like, I don't know about drawing straight lines, I've never, like, I, I, I would like to have a um, pencil, use a pencil first, then you can use a pencil first. So I'm just gonna keep working like this with my marker because it's gonna save me a step later when I have to erase all of my lines, my pencil lines underneath. Just like that. I'm curious what shapes you guys chose. I saw somebody did a hummingbird. Um, Jenna, it's okay. You don't have to be at this part yet. It's totally fine, mine. Yeah, I just finished cutting out my hummingbird, but I don't know what to do next. So to, after you're done cutting your hummingbird shape out, you're gonna put it on your paper and you're gonna trace it, okay? So you're gonna trace it. Ooh, ooh, I see some cat. That's a good one. Who, what other shapes do people, are people choosing? Curious. A chess pawn, that's a really cool one, Isaac. Um, that's a, I like that shape. That's going to be really neat. So today we're using lines to trick the eye. But like I said, sometimes op, art, op artists used color to tri trick the eye too. The closer you put your line to line together, the, um, the better of an optical illusion you will make. So you want your lines to be pretty close together. And I actually, like I said, oh, you're doing an ice cream. That's awesome. What are you doing, Milani? Milani, are you, is it Milani or I think it's Milani? Are you making, you'll have to tell us what you're, what you're making. Um, yeah, like I said, if you use a ruler that you can do that too. I just find that it takes a little bit longer. So that's why I'm just, that's why I'm just using a, uh, a sharpie. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna freehand it. And it's okay if your lines wobble a little bit. It actually just kind of adds to it. You don't have to be perfectly straight. Milani is doing an M. What's that? Milani oh, is doing, doing an M. M. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. The trickiest part is that um, if your shape has a lot of like curves or spaces to it, you've really got to try to keep those lines straight on the outside. So if you, you, sometimes depending on what kind of shape, like if I had an M, I might have to like draw a line, jump part of the M, continue the line, jump part of the M, continue the line, jump part of the M, continue the line. <laughs> you might have to do that depending on what kind of shape you did. And I like that people are doing like a letter. That's a cool one. That's a really cool one. I feel like magic art books should come back. They're magic eye books. They used to be so popular, popular books. So yes, Isaiah, the trick is to fill the whole page. So it might take a few minutes. That is, that is the trick. That's what's, gonna, um, that's what's gonna cause the, the illusion to happen, is when you, when you fill the whole page. But remember, you're leaving your silhouetted shape in the middle empty for now. We're gonna add lines to it in a minute, but we have to, we're gonna fill the whole background up first.
So just like that. So our eyes can really be tricked and fooled. Let me see. While you guys are catching up and, wor and working on these, Oh yeah, there are for sure, Isaac. There definitely are websites. While you guys are, are, are working on this, I'm gonna see if I can find a couple more op op art um, pictures to show you because there, there are some really cool ones. See if I can find a good site that has them all listed. That's not Pinterest. Let's see. So yeah, so you guys just keep, you can keep working. Oh, this one's really cool. Oh, that's Pinterest. I just don't like going to Pinterest. The pictures are too small on it. Let's try this. Ah, this one by Bridget Riley is one of my favorites. I'm gonna share, I'll share. I couldn't find, let's see if I can get a larger. Yeah, here I'll share my screen. This one, this one is by Bridget Riley. And it's one of my, it's one of my favorites because I feel like it's really effective. It, it's almost like, I would I remember when I was teaching art in the classroom, I would share it with the kids in the class and they'd be like, they'd be like, my eyes hurt <laughs> from looking at it. It's this one. And I know it's a little grainy, it's just the computer screen. But this one is done by Bridget Riley and you can see that it's all just lines, but the longer you look at it, the more it really starts to look like it's moving. It almost looks like it's vibrating. And it's all just because of the lines that she has done. And it's all because of like the thickness and the, I think to some extent the colors that she uses, I think that she didn't just use black and white. She's also using reds and blues, which are just hard to see when you're looking at it. But this one's one of my absolute favorites. Okay, but yeah, so keep working on those lines. That if you ever, get a chance to go to New York City I, and or, um, yeah, in, in, in New York City, in the, there's a museum called the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art. They have a large collection of op art. I think that there, there's another museum in London called the Tate that also has a large collection of op art. So op art, as an art is an art movement um, and it, was mostly started in like the 19, uh, maybe 50s, 50s and 60s. And um, yeah, and so a lot of, sometimes it's only the, the more modern art, the more modern museums that, that collect op art pieces. You, you might find a few in the, like if you go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but you'll mostly find them if you go to like the Museum of Modern Art, which is like the more modern contemporary art, art museum. And they're really cool. So one thing that I'm always surprised about when you ever, if you ever go to a museum and you see a piece of art that you've seen before, 
And sometimes it can be really surprising the size of it. Sometimes people are really surprised by how big or how small things really are in person when they're, they're used to seeing things like a piece of art on like a screen. For instance, the Mona Lisa, you would think that the Mona Lisa would be pretty big because it's just, it's the most, one of the most famous paintings in the whole world. The truth is that the Mona Lisa, the painting itself is actually pretty small. Uh, I'd have to go look up the exact dimensions, but it's, it's far, far smaller than, um, far, far smaller than, um, than you would think it is. I see a couple of, a couple of questions. Yes. So you're supposed to go all the way to the corner. So I just paused because I was showing you guys some op art, but I'm going to continue my lines. I'm going to draw them all the way going all the way to the ends. And I'm actually gonna continue and go all the way, I'm filling up the entire background with these lines. <laughs> yeah, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna look up exactly what size the Mona Lisa is. It's two feet by six inches and one foot by nine inches. So that's actually, if I put two pieces of, of this paper together, if I had like two, if you have two regular, like, like basically if you put two pieces of your, um, of your sketchbook size paper next to each other, that's about the size of the Mona Lisa. So it's actually far, far smaller than people think it is because it's such a famous piece of art. So I think in our minds, we think, oh, it's gotta be so big. Um, and op art is kind of the opposite. A lot of times these artists like to work really, really big. And so sometimes you go into like a museum that has op art and like an entire wall will have a piece that is like a, an op art piece and it'll be lots, many, many, many feet big. Just filling in the background with color and leaving the center blank would make an interesting image. You're right. You're totally right. So today we're it, op art is all based on pattern and repetition, which are two uh, 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 pretty important things in art. Pattern and repetition, like they're, they're two. Uh, they're not the elements of art, but they are the elements of design. So. You're gonna continue those lines all the way to the corner. And then you're gonna to start to work on the other half of your paper. You guys might be ahead of me. I don't know where you are. If you would like to share yours, just put your hand up. So this is what I meant when I said you might have to like, if you have a shape that has lots of little like nooks and crannies. So for this line, I drew it straight down and then I'm jumping, but then there's like a little bit of space here. So I need to add a little tiny line right there and then continue on the other side, just like that. I might have to do that again. So for the next line, straight line down, jump, little line, just like that. Okay, yeah, but if anybody wants to share their work so far, just put your hand up. We'd love to see what uh, love to see what what kind of images you guys have. Like I said, it's all about trying to get those lines really close to each other. To each other. Here's Janet. That's what's going to fool your eye the most. Hi, Janet. Let's see. How's your hummingbird going? Oh wow! Wait, bring it closer. It's a little hard to see because you're a little far away. Oh, cool. Oh, that looks awesome. Very cool. Very, very cool. So you're almost to the next step. Okay, I better hurry up. Let me, uh, let me see what I can do about finishing this as quickly as I can so that I can show you guys the next step. If you're waiting, if you're like, I've already finished this step, go back and see if there's any spaces in between lines. Like if you have like, some lines that are closer to, to each other and some that are farther apart. Like for instance, maybe I did a line over here like this. Go back in and see if you can fill in some of those gaps. So like I know I can fit at least two more lines in right here. So here. 
and one here. Okay. So now we're gonna. I'm gonna show you the next step is to to fill in. So remember, I said this is the background, and our dolphin is now gonna be the foreground. It's gonna be the front part of our picture. We're gonna show you how to do the lines on the doll or on your shape. So in my case, it's the dolphin. And then the last step is gonna to be to add color. And there's a lot of ways you can add color. If you wanna add color with like color pencils, you can do that. If you wanna add color with markers or crayons, you could do that. Um, I'm actually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna to try to be a little bit adventurous today. And I'm gonna try marker painting. If you have watercolors, watercolors work really, really well because they're quick. Um, markers, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. It's all an experiment. Art is just one big, great big experiment. So if you've never tried marker painting before, all it is, is it's a substitute for, um, it's, it's in, if you don't have uh, watercolors, but you have washable markers like Crayola, Crayola is a washable marker, it's, wa it's a water-based marker. A Sharpie is a permanent marker, so it is not washable. So it, it, uh, marker, marker painting would not work with a Sharpie, but it will work with a, with a Crayola. Um, and all you need is, a, is, is washable markers, a brush, and a little bit of water. So I'm gonna try that today and we'll see what happens. I don't know. Like I said, this is all a great experiment. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. So if we get to that step, that's gonna be how I color mine in, but you can use whatever materials you have. Can I use um, Artworks markers? They're little, they're thin markers. Um, to, do, um, the, to do marker painting? You know what, I'm not sure, because I don't know if those markers are I don't know that brand, but you know what? What I would do, if you would like to test them out, is try, try it on a separate piece of paper. Okay. Get a, so this was, this was a drawing I did in a different art class where I, where I, um, I used uh, marker painting. And you can see that where you add marker and water, the, the, the colors kind of bleed out. So, just try it on a separate piece of paper. Try drawing with a with some marker and then go over it with some water and see what happens. Test it. Cat's hand is up. Cat. What's going on, Cat? So I wanted to, I've been working on my silhouette because mine's yeah. not complicated, but you wouldn't be able to recognize it if I did it wrong. Okay. So I've been working on my silhouette, so I don't know if the lines have to Diagonal? So you, uh, it doesn't matter if they're diagonal. You could actually do lines that are straight or that are going up and down. The only thing that matters, you could do, you could do vertical lines, you could do horizontal lines. The only thing that really does matter is that the lines in the back are straight. So they could be diagonal straight, they could be vertical straight, they could be horizontal straight but they, you want the lines that are in the background to be straight. I see another question. I hope that answers your question, Kat. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. When you're done with using pencil to make the lines, do you go and use Sharpie? Yes. So you do want the lines to be dark. So yes, if you're done with that, then you might wanna go ahead and use Sharpie and start going over your, over your lines. You could do that step, you could do the Sharpie step now, or if you want, you can wait till the very end and you could Sharpie everything at the very end. I'm just putting a piece of black paper underneath my work so that if I go off of the paper, um, I don't write on my desk, on my tabletop. So I'm just putting like a little bit of a placemat down. Okay, just like this. Finally, I'm at the part where I don't have to jump over my shape anymore. I can just do some straight lines. Okay, 
All right. So there we are, there we have it. Now here comes the most tricky part of this picture. And um, so you pay attention to this part because this is, this is gonna be the kind of the trickiest part. So what you're doing now is you're on your foreground, you're gonna draw curved lines. So lines that are curving out because curved lines are gonna give the illusion that your shape is popping or coming out. It's, so how I do it is I'm actually gonna start down here in the bottom and here, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. And the trick is, ooh, <laughs> it looks really pixel, guys, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. I think that's just, that's just how it's gonna look. All right, there's op some crazy optical illusions going on. So anywhere where my two lines kind of meet, um, so here, so here my line, right here is a little too small, but like, so my, I, this line I drew and I jumped that tail and I did here. So starting from here, I'm just drawing a curved line to connect them. And then a curved line next to it to connect. A curved line. So anywhere where my two lines met, I'm curving that line. It's going to give the illusion that this dolphin, this dolphin's tail is popping out. Curved, curved. I'm going like curved, curved. I don't know if you guys can see that. See how it, it's slightly curving it? And, oh, and it doesn't have to be perfect. There is no perfect. Just you're trying your best. Oop, this one, I didn't make them line up, so let me fix that a little bit. Curve it. I would suggest doing this part with the pencil first. I'm gonna turn it this way. Anywhere I had those lines meet, I'm just doing a slightly curved line. Just like this. And it can be, this is, this is the trickiest part because, and it can be especially tricky if you did lots of lines like I did because the, the, the closer the lines are, the more you have to try to make them match up. And it's okay if it's not perfect. If it's okay if you like get to the end and you draw a line and you're like, where's the other side of that line? That's totally fine. Just try your best on, if you can, to make most of them match up. I'm just curving, curving, curving that line. And some shapes will work better for this than others. So you'll have to see. Okay, so this can also get a little tricky when your shape jumps a lot. So like this, and then ooh, over here, jump and start doing some of these curved lines over here, on his tail, or on his, one of his fins. That. Do a curve, big curve line like that. So let me back out a little bit so you guys can see. So starting like that, and then you might have like a weird gap like I do, so I might try to fill, I'm not sure, I think I might try to erase that right here. And fill that in a little bit more, because otherwise it's gonna look a little weird. That. Curve lines. The other thing about optical illusions is usually, like it, sometimes where you stand in relation to them can affect the illusion. So sometimes if you get up super close to the illusion, it'll, it won't be, it'll, it's harder to see, but if you back away from your picture, you'll be able to see the illusion a little bit more.
Evie mentioned if the lines are too close, it might be a bit harder to make bigger curves. That's true. That is true. So you, you, if you, yeah, if you have super close lines, then you kind of have to gauge how big of a curve you can fit in between them. That's a good point, Evie. Actually, I think I might skip one of those lines because my lines are getting a little tricky. So like I said, this is the hardest part of this. Just try your best. To make it work. This tail, this nose. I'm actually gonna just gonna do a couple of lines. I'm making up these lines don't have ends, but I'm just gonna do a couple curves like that. Okay. So now that I have gone over those with pencil, <laughs> it's okay, Evie, if it doesn't look like anything yet. It's all right. Keep working on it. Once you've gone over them with pencil, then you probably if you did Sharpie on the first one, you probably want to do Sharpie. So I'm gonna quickly go over these with Sharpie. And then the last thing we're going to do to really make it look like it is an optical illusion and popping out is when we color it, we're actually going to give it a little bit of a shadow. And giving something a shadow can really help. So I'm not, one thing I'm not doing is I'm not taking my, my pencil and I'm not tracing over my Sharpie. I'm not tracing over the pencil line, the out, the, the contour line. So that, that first line, the line that we, this line that we drew, I'm not going to trace over that. I'm actually going to erase that line when I'm done. All I'm doing right now is tracing over my curved lines. Just like that. And the more you can make them match up to each other at the end on the sides, the better. But like I said, None of them are perfect. I know some of mine don't do not match up and that's okay. The important thing is that if you get the most of them to match up, then then you won't notice any of the ones that don't. And you, the curve doesn't have to be a huge curve. You can see my curve isn't huge. Like I don't do a huge curve. Just a slight curve. Like I'm not doing like a like a like a rainbow shape curve. It's more of a shallow, shallow curve. Just like that. Okay, so I'm quickly going over all of my lines. Well, Leanna and Heather Rose would like to share. Oh yeah, girls, I'd love to see. Show us what you got. Uh, Heather is still working, so it's just me for now, but, um... That's okay. I'd love to see Liliana. Whoa! Oh my gosh. That came out so good! Okay. It's totally a magic eye. It, okay, I can kind of guess what it is. Oh, I don't, I don't want to be wrong. Is, is it a rabbit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought with the two ears. <laughs> Phew! But that's the cool part is that like it really is like a total optical illusion. Have you gone over and erased your pencil lines? If you haven't, Liliana, you go ahead and erase your pencil lines, okay? I have. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, that looks really cool. You finished so fast. I did a lot of lines on mine. 
But like I said, the closer your lines are, the more like a true optical illusion your work will, will be. It'll be more, more true to an optical illusion. Okay. Ooh, my eyes, I don't know about you guys, if you're, as you're working on this, my eyes are going like uh, loopy. <laughs> my eyes are starting to, I'm starting to hypnotize myself with all these lines. If you are done with this step and you're, you've erased, the next step is starting to color it. Um, like I said before, if you really want it to truly look like an optical illusion, then I suggest coloring it all in one color. So when I'm doing my marker trick, my marker, uh, marker magic, I'm going to just use one color. I'm gonna try to get that pigment of the color throughout the whole paper. Um, so if, you, if you're doing it with, with colored pencils, I do suggest you try to just use one color. So you might wanna think about what color you want. Almost done. Evie is asking, how would we use color to make it more 3D looking? So we're, I'm going to show you in a second. We're going to add a shadow. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you in just one second. We're going to use a, um, all right, so there's mine. So now I'm going to go ahead and I think I need to grab the eraser. Ooh. Let's see here. The eraser is running. Hello. So I'm just going around and I'm erasing the, uh, the contour line, the silhouette line that I, that I originally had, and any pencil lines that I had. If you have a bigger eraser than mine, you should use it. Like I said, watercolor works great for something like this. So if you ever do another one and you have watercolors on hand, they, uh, they work really, really well. So I'm just going over it. There we go, almost done. Okay, all right, there we have it. Okay, so, um, like I said, for for this, let me test. It's always good to test. I have like a sheet of paper right here. So I'm gonna, actually, you know what, I'm gonna use a blank sheet of paper. It's always good if you're using markers and you're trying marker, marker painting to test the colors because sometimes colors work better than others. So yeah, this one works pretty good. So you can tell that it works, this color works pretty, pretty well because you can see the pigment is coming out of the, of the, the, of the, the area that I colored in. The, the, when I brush my brush away, that, that pigment is almost like paint. It's like a pale, fa like faded paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the border. And I'm just gonna, just gonna add and start color, like do a line like this, around the outside. Like that. And then I'm gonna start painting that color in. So I'm taking my brush and I'm bringing the color from the outside in. I don't know if you can see it that well, but starting to really come forward. You can see the color starts to 
bleed inward, kind of the way watercolor would. And if you're doing this with um, colored pencils, then all you're doing is you're giving your whole paper like one light color, one light like layer of color. And then like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna the illusion a little bit more, um, uh, we're gonna give it a little more dimension by giving our shape a shadow. We're just gonna give it a little bit of, a little bit of color underneath. There is a question. I don't have any of those things, so what do I do? Do you have any color pencils? So you don't, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You could use any, any material. You could use pencils. You could use crayons to color yours in. Yes, color yeah, pencils. Yeah, so you, you could totally use color pencils. Absolutely. Just giving it one more, one more line here just to give me the color blend in a little bit more. Just like this, or get the color a little bit, a little bit darker. So the follow-up question is: so just lightly color the whole page one color? Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. So if I was going to use color pencils, I would have just taken my color pencil and I would just kind of really lightly go over over my whole picture. The other thing about marker, about um, using markers and doing marker painting is that it, you have to, you know, it depends on what kind of paper you have too. So the thicker, like the, the watercolor paper works the best, but if you have regular, if you have regular thin paper, sometimes when you're adding too much water, the water will, um, you, you have a, a you can you can potentially tear your paper, which wouldn't be good. So you want to work kind of lightly, and you don't want to add too much water if your paper is really thin. Okay. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow. So underneath, I'm just kind of drawing a line here, about where kind of where the contour was. I'm going to take my color. I'm gonna try to blend the color out. And this works better with watercolors, for sure. You have watercolors. I might even take, um, I might even take a, uh, a colored pencil when I'm done and go over and kind of blend the colors in a little bit more. There we go. So I'm giving it a little bit of a shadow. One trick too with water, with water, uh, painting or with marker painting is like you can add a blob of water and then tap your marker on it. You can see it sometimes it takes the color from the, the tip of the marker but that's okay because the, the marker is color is this whole marker is filled with pigment and it'll drain back in. You just gotta like gotta wait. So all I'm doing is I'm kind of adding a, a little shadow underneath. Oh my gosh, it's already 12. We're running over, but that's okay. If anybody has any works that they want to share with us, I'd love to see how this op art worked for you guys. I know it's a totally different style of art that we are trying today. Have any takers? Anybody want to share? I think what I might do is now after this is dry, I'm gonna probably I might go back over it with I can't do it now because it's too wet, but I might go back over it and add a little bit more color, more blue, and try to like blend the colors in a little bit more. But now you can actually totally see, and actually I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna actually and I want and, and this is what I want you guys to do. So I'm standing up and I'm actually gonna back away from my picture and I'm gonna look at it from far away. So you might want to like, when it's dry, you might want to hang it up on your, uh, on your fridge or something or on your wall and back away and have a good look at it and see 
if it really does look like it's popping out because mine, mine really does. So like, and the, the trick is, is that the farther away from it you are, the more the effect will, the stronger the effect will be. Okay. Do we have anybody who would like to share? We're, still, we're all still working. <laughs> yeah, this one, this project took a little while. So you might just, uh, everybody might still be working, which is totally fine. I'm just gonna keep working, adding a little bit more color to mine with some more markers. Um, and Heather, uh, I know Liliana, you shared, Heather Rose, how's yours going? Whoa, it's a little mouse. Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. That's gonna look so cool when you're done. Oh my gosh, I know that this, so this project might just take us longer than an hour. I worked really fast. That looks so cool. That looks so cool. Liliana, nice job. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you, are you gonna color it? Do you know what, uh, what you're gonna use? Uh, are you talking to me? Yeah. Are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna do color pencil or yeah I already did see. Oh you did? Oh I can see it now when you bring it up close. Oh awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So if you use if you use marker, then just find the underside. And actually you don't have to do it just on the bottom. I could actually do it all the way around. And add a little bit of a shadow all the way around your creature, all the way around your your shape. Ooh, my, my marker is starting to like dry out a little bit. So this may or may not work for me. But Kat would like to share. Oh, let's see, Kat. So I um, took extra time on my silhouette because I wanted to get it right, but this is what I have to work. Ooh, nice. Oh, that's a great horse. It's so clear. There's eraser specs all over and it's kind of imperfect because I was working and then someone brought me a new eraser because my eraser ran out. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't wait to see what that looks like when it's done. Um, we have class on Friday. So if you ever, if you finish something, I'm, I'm teaching on Friday. You can share, share it with me then, okay? Hi, Vienna. Hi, Victoria. Whoa, that looks so cool. I like that star shape you did. That looks really neat. We were actually um, we were actually looking at a few optical illusions, and I decided to chase this. Oh, that one's really beautiful. Get hey, out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> I like the teddy bear. He's so cute. He's really cute. I love I'm him. I'm challenged today to do the teddy bear. It's what gave me the idea. <laughs> I love it. I love that you guys were looking at other optical illusions also. also. Very Thank cool. you. Judy's hand is up. Yeah, Judy, let's see. Oh, Judy, that looks amazing. Judy, did you do the watercolor trick too? Or the marker, marker painting? Because your, your markers came out really nice. The color came out really beautiful. I love that. It looks really, really nice. Beautiful, beautiful work. Um, what, I do, what I do suggest is, uh, is and I, I'm going to do it when my, my marker, you can see my marker lost its ink, but so I have to wait a little bit of time. Sometimes I store my markers upside down like this so that all of the ink drips down to the tip. And I might add a little bit more of a shadow, maybe even on the top part. So it really looks like it's popping out. Um, yeah, no problem, Judy, you did such a good job. These came out really, really cool. Liliana, Heather Rose, I see your hand is up. What's up, let's see. Whoa, that looks great. That looks awesome. I can't wait till you add some color, but I can totally tell that it is a mouse. <laughs> He's so cute with his little ears and his tail. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, you did do the color. Sorry. It's just so pale. It's hard to see. You did the green. That looks awesome. 
I don't forget you go back and add a, even a little bit more shadow around the edge. Like see if you can blend it in. Like um, like like remember when we were doing value? Like try to shade a little bit out. That'll make it look like it's even popping out even more. But that looks amazing. Does anybody else want to share their work? Oh, I see Milani. Whoa. There's Milani. There's your M. Oh, so cool. And I here's my brother. <laughs> nice. Wait, that's it. That, you did a really, how old is your brother? You did a really good job. Hi, nice job. Really Thanks. nice work. Both of you, those came out really cool. Really, really cool. Some cool optical illusions there. Nice work. Is there anybody else who wants to share? We are already over time, so this is kind of our last call if you'd like to share. And if you don't, no worries. Um, what I will say is like, if, you, if you're still working and you wanna share with me another time, you can share with me on, uh, um, on Friday or, or any other day. We'll see <laughs> when we have more classes. But my, my next class is this Friday. Oh, hi, Isaac, let's see. Hey there. Um, I'm not quite done yet. That's okay. Whoa. Okay, it's hard to tell what it is a little bit, um, but I, your lines are so tight and close together. It looks awesome. Like, oh my gosh, when you're done with this, it's gonna look really, really, really cool. Thank you. You'll have to tell us what what shape. What is your shape? Um, it is a pawn. Oh, oh yeah, you told me that. You, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a chess pawn. I can see. Hold it up again. Hold it up again. Let me see. Now I can see it. I, now I can totally see the around the edge of it. Yes. Yep. Oh, that's, yeah, that, that shape is tricky because it's like, uh, it, it, like a pawn, a pawn shape is like, um, I guess a pawns can be almost any, sh like, well, no, pawns are all pretty much the same shape with the same bulbous yeah. little head. Yeah. yeah. That's going to look really cool. Your line work is really good. Thank Your you. lines are so straight. Did you do those freehand or did you use a ruler? No, I, I used a ruler. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> The ones on great. the left of it are a little bit tighter than the ones on the right because before then I realized I didn't realize that my uh, ruler was transparent and I oh, could yeah. use the length of the actual millimeter lines that yeah. to actually measure. I you know what I it's hard for me nowadays to use a um, a, a ruler that is not transparent. Like I feel That's like transparent true. rulers are just so much more useful than rulers that are not. <laughs> All right, well, you guys did an awesome job. Last call for sharing if you'd like. Otherwise, otherwise I'll see you guys on Friday. All right, I hope you have an awesome week. You all did an amazing job. And if you ever Google op art, you'll have to let me know because some pieces are really cool looking. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for coming. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.